Greetings everyone, Fru here. Welcome to the Demo Hub. In today's demo, we're going to take a look at Python models within DBT. This is a new recent announcement, a very exciting announcement to say from the DBT family, being able to build models with Python as opposed to just SQL. Now SQL is a capable language, but there are scenarios where for one reason or another, Python is what you want to use. Python has certain packages, especially for machine learning, for model development that uh, SQL just doesn't have. And so being able to leverage Python, but still build your models in DBT is a very exciting capability. So this is an announcement. We're going to go in, unpack this and see a demo of this with a snowpack for Python. Now, links to all of this will be in the description below. There are certain limitations as we go through. I'm going to call those all out. It's still fresh off the press as of recording this video. So definitely make sure you stay on top with the documentation as this uh, project evolves. In here, you can see the best practices, the next steps, and there is a Slack channel if you want to get involved with that Slack channel. That's it. Let's go back into uh, Visual Studio Code to see the actual demo of what this looks like developing Python models within dbt core in this case. So you can do it with dbt core or dbt cloud, but for this demo, we're leveraging dbt core. So previously we had this very simple scenario of customers and orders. We brought it together. We have our customers our model. We had the orders model, and this is all in SQL. We were going through and doing a customers by orders model, you know, taking those two, joining and getting the result. Now, what we're going to see is being able to do the same, but leveraging Python. To start, we're going to go in and create a new file, call this file stage uh, customer orders.py, and that would be a Python file. So as opposed to the .sql files within our models, we're going to call this the Python files. Now, the very first thing we're going to need uh, to do a Python model within uh, the dbt core is uh, import snowflake snowpack functions. All of this will be in the description below. Now with those uh, two things uh, imported, next thing is do some materialization. Define a simple function here, which should be a model of dbt and we're passing in the session. And in here, we're going to take uh, the config and tell it how uh, dbt should materialize this particular model. As of making this video, you can materialize just with uh, tables. Views aren't supported yet. Tests aren't supported. Macros aren't supported. And a few other things aren't supported. But in the future, I'm sure those will all be implemented. Once we have that, the next thing we're going to do, uh, very similar to what you do when working with SQL models, is to reference other models. Very similar to how you reference other models in SQL. Let's actually go in and take a look at one of those. Let's take a look at uh, this, where we can come in and we can reference other models, which is the power of dbt here in SQL. In Python, we can do the same. So in this case, we're going to be using dbt ref, and the name here will be the name of the models we're trying to ref. So we're going to reference the customers and the others. Now, once we have that, we can begin doing work. Think about this almost like a, a data frame that you have just using df here for uh, signifying data frame. Now uh, we're going to get the customer's orders and this is where the fun begins. So we can now reference previous uh, models Go in, in this case, we're going to reference the def orders from above and we're going to group by the cost key. Next, we're going to take that and aggregate, I'll do some aggregations on that. And for that, we're going to look at the mean order date, which would be the first order. We're then going to look at the max order date, which would be the most recent order, as well as going in and doing a count of the orders. So bear with me for the long sequel here. But this logic is very amenable. You can put in whatever logic makes sense. But the beauty of this is you're doing this in Python as opposed to SQL. Python is very capable, has very unique characteristics. Where SQL falls short, you might want to look at Python to do some of your transformations or some of your data engineering. Once that's done, we now will have a, a model 
that we can then return to the screen. So just like that, to recap, uh, we have a session on GBT. We're materializing this as a table. We're referencing two existing models, doing some new transformations, uh, again, leveraging Python data frame style processing uh, here for the transformations. Once we're done with that, we're going to re return this model. Very typical of what you do with uh, DBT, but we're doing this in Python as opposed to uh, SQL. So let's go ahead and save this. As before, I have three or so models in here, but before we run this, let's go ahead and verify on the Snowflake side that uh, there is no table that exists within Snowflake. When the models run, we should expect that table to be persisted and materialized. All right, so going back, do a DBT run. Takes a few seconds. The first models have executed. Now this is running the Python model. One observation is it takes a little bit longer to run the Python model, and that might just be because of how new uh, this capability is. So just something to be aware of. If you notice the SQL models were very fast, now the Python model is running and this will be materialized on the Snowflake site. That was successful and successful. Go back over to Snowflake. We do a refresh of our objects here. We now see that table has been materialized. The model has been materialized as a table. And if you want to go in and view this data, we can certainly view the data. So here you see my customer key, our first order, most recent order, and the number of orders has been calculated for us based on what we wrote in the Python model script. Now, if we go in into the activities, this is actually interesting to see what's happening behind the scenes because we're leveraging Snowpack for Python. I had a couple of models that ran before, but what I want to call attention to is this. You can see it's calling this start procedure. So you might say, but why is it calling a stored procedure? Well, it's creating a stored procedure. If we open this up, this uh, Python code, because it's taking advantage of Snowpack for Python, that Python code is being materialized as a stored procedure. Whenever this stored procedure is called, it executes this model that was uh, implemented. Uh, that's what's really happening behind the scenes. So if we go back one more time, once that uh, stored procedure has been executed, it goes ahead and it drops that procedure and cleans everything up. And then here is just what we've done to view that data. A very exciting capability. Python is a very capable language. It's a, one of the most exciting capabilities uh, on Snowflake. Uh, and what that means is for people who want to do advanced machine learning, model development, you know, SQL is capable. Everybody loves SQL. It's always recommended if you're trying to do something and SQL can do it for you, go ahead, do it in SQL. There's no question about that. But there might be situations where SQL falls short. There are certain functions that you just will not have in SQL or doing it in SQL would just be more cumbersome as opposed to doing it in Python. In those cases, now with this support, with dbt, supporting Python and taking advantage of Snowpack for Python, you can do a lot of those works very seamlessly with Python. So very excited about this capability, especially for data engineering teams, taking advantage of Snowpack for Python. This is a game changer. So uh, check this out. Uh, links to all of this will be in the description below. As always, if you like this, like the video, share it with somebody that might get value out of it. This has been through with Demo Hub, and I'll see you in the next demo. Thank <laughs> you.